morning friends how are you i'm sure you had a good week ahead today i'm going to take another edition on monday morning matters i'm need to model your certified church consultants okay so every week it's um, a big responsibility on my part to make sure that i come with some form of tip towards you every monday morning i don't know why it's morning morning but at least morning morning is when you should crack some nuts all right so i'll be taking some tips today on discipleship okay last week we mentioned 12 areas that makes the church healthy and of course if you want to have that tip just look for my earlier post on the 12 things that you should look at for a church to be healthy but today i said every week of, 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 of monday i'm taking one of those um, purposes or functions that makes a church healthy and i'll just give you some one or two tips about it okay but can we just read the bible quickly before I go into what I have to say, in Matthew chapter 28, verses 18 to 20, and Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Verse 19, say, Go ye therefore and teach all nations. In that scripture to the end, you will see that Jesus Christ mentioned the word teach two wise. Okay, he said, Teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father. Of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. And verse 20 says again, teaching them to observe. So one is not to teach to know, another one is to teach to observe. Get that? Teach to know, and of course, teach to observe all the things whatsoever I've commanded you. One thing about discipleship, I'm going to talk on discipleship today, is that you don't just teach people to know with head knowledge, you teach them to observe, you teach them to do certain things that they can do for themselves. So discipleship is very, very key. A disciple is someone who loves God, who is obedient to his teachings and, and commandments, someone who is self-denial, he, he denies himself of some certain comfort or privileges just to follow um, the master. And that's what discipleship the disciples do, do, do. They follow the master. Of course, they also make themselves available for trainings. They also give themselves opportunity to learn and to grow. I'm someone that I want to give some appreciation some people who discipled me when I gave my life to Christ in the early 90s. Um, there's one of the pastors, Pastor Alfred James. I can remember every, almost every day we'll come to the house, they will open the scriptures to me, we'll pray together, we'll fast together, we'll deny ourselves of some comfort to make sure that the flesh is subdued and the spirit is really energized to do what God has uh, called us to do. Pastor James, Alfred James really played a very vital role in my discipleship and also pastor um Ruti I, I, I'm, sure, I'm, I'm, I'm sure the first advice he gave me was to read the book of john and reading the book of john was um so good for me to have a good foundation and of course i want to leave a note uh, in a in a comment of a, a discipleship and ministerial training manual by reverend abraham akiola very fantastic talks on uh, new creation realities, prayer, spiritual warfare, hearing from God, um, walking with God, um, the gift of the Spirit, fruit of the Spirit, you know, um, you know, how to understand the scriptures, basic things that, that, that should make a disciple grounded because disciples is not by uh, it's, it's not made by it being coming an instant adult. You, you need time and patience. Like Jesus Christ stayed like three and a half years before you can see that the disciples were, you know, established. And so even with the fact that they were established, you could find that Jesus, uh, Judas Iscariot was also uh, lost to the devil. But what I'm, I'm going to say is, briefly, discipleship is different from evangelism, but from this process I'm going to, 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 to explain to you, it starts with evangelism but then discipleship making discipleship making is a combination of evangelism and discipleship okay so but it starts with evangelism so witnessing to the soul you get them the result is that you get them converted you get converts and then from converts you will now take them to some training objectives that's it it has its own curriculum all right, you can private chat me. We'll look at what are the things you need to get a convert so I can be able to get a disciple, a, a disciple at the end of the day. Follow up is made based on the training objectives for the convert to get a disciple. The result is a disciple. From disciples, you need to equip them to go out to make the impact that they need. And from being equipped, they become workers. Maybe 
volunteers or workers in the house of God. And being a, from a worker, you don't stop there. You get maybe one-on-one -on -one mentoring coaching or in-depth um, personal training. That's another set of training objectives to make sure that you become a leader. You see, and then from leader, it now goes back to witnessing again. That circle goes on. But you see, most of the time, most churches like to get converts and they begin to give them leadership trainings. It's a process and you cannot just um, jump, go through that process in a um, wrong way. So the process of disciple making is a combination of evangelism and discipleship. But today, I've focused on discipleship. It starts from being a convert, witnessing with the help of the Holy Spirit to convince the person, be a convert, train the objective to get the person to become a disciple. And then you will now equip the person to become a worker, one-on-one, -on -one, you know, and why I want us to look at this word disciple is that most of our disciples usually don't have a proven curriculum or training systems and processes to make sure that the quality of disciples that we have produced are actually good. The more disciples you have in your church, the more chances that you're going to have more disciples. And of course, it's very, very easy for you to um, um, have disciples. The Bible says in Acts chapter 6, verse 7 or so, he said the word increased, and of course, the number of disciples also multiplied. And it's possible in your church that the disciples you have can multiply. If you can able to understand the process, create a system behind it, understand the curriculum, empower your disciples, and then let understand this process disciple making will be fun and it's a matter of time and patience you want to have more disciples and the more disciples we have the more that we have people who go out to the world to witness for christ i hope we've gotten something today uh, i just want to just there's so much i can share but i just want to make it short so that i have something to do to, to, to take on with um so please i'm going to drop the comments on um the, the discipleship and ministerial training manual okay by reverend abraham akimola and that will help you it's on amazon i bought it it's very very good and that will help anyone who wants to disciple people in your church so until i come again next monday thank you for listening to me try and share this to a pastor try and share it to, to a church worker and it will bless you did thank you i'm need to again your certified church consultant god bless you